Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week asks you to calculate the following integral. So we have integral of, double integral, so some kind of area of the integrand is x times e to the quantity x squared plus y squared, all to the 3 halves. And our bounds of integration are from y equals 0 to y equals square root of 9 minus x squared, and from x equals negative 3 to 0. So this is not something, this integrand here is not something that we know how to integrate with respect to either x or y. Because, you know, we can't make a u substitution because there's no function and its derivative here easily, you know, accessible to us. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to graph the bounds of integration and see if we can switch into a different coordinate system. So we're going to go ahead and graph these bounds of integration here. So we have from y equals 0 to y equals square root of 9 minus x squared. So from y equals 0, so when y is equal to the square root of 9 minus x squared, we're going to have the positive hemisphere of the circle of radius 3. So something in here. And we know that x is from negative 3 to 0. So x is from negative 3 to 0. So we're just going to have this overlapping region here or this quarter circle. So we need to find this area here using this integral. So we can easily, easily switch our bounds of integration into polar coordinates. But to do so, we should remember a couple of facts about um, polar coordinates. So we can convert without making any algebra mistakes or forgetting any parts of our um, integrand. So we know that x is equal to r cosine theta uh, we know that we also know also that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And finally, we know that our area uh, differential here, dA, or dA, which is equal to dx, dy dx, or dx dy, dA is going to be equal to r dr d theta. So remember, we have an extra r term, which we're going to need to remember to add into the integral later on. Okay, so it looks like we can easily set this up again. Just convert, we'll set up the bounds of integration after we fix the integrand here. So we know that x is equal to r cosine theta, so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in here. r cosine theta instead of x. And we have e to the, okay, so we know that x squared plus y squared from here is equal to r squared. So r squared all to the 3 halves is equal to r cubed. So it's just going to be e to the r cubed. And don't forget the extra r. And then we have d theta dr or dr d theta. So in this case, we're going to need to set up our, reset up our bounds of integration. So it looks like we're integrating here from theta. So theta goes from pi over 2 here all the way from pi here. It rotates there. So our bounds for theta are going to be pi over 2 to pi. And our bounds for r are going to be 0 to 3 because we have radius 3. So r goes from 0 to 3. Okay, so we can simplify this down. Now we have our bounds of integration set up here. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this, just simplify it by combining uh, the r terms. So we have pi over 2 to pi from 0 to 3 uh, times r. So we have r times r, so we have r squared. And we also have e to the r cubed, just grouping together the terms with the r's in them. e to the r cubed, and then we have times cosine theta and times, uh, or excuse me, we have the operator d theta dr here. So we're going to go ahead and try first integrating with respect to theta, because it looks like we only have a cosine theta here, and we know that the integral of cosine theta is sine theta plus some constant, but we're going to go ahead and forget about the constant because we have, the, we have a definite integral here, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so I'll go ahead and rewrite this up here. Okay, this is going to be equal to um, the single integral from 0 to 3, r equals 0 to r equals 3. We integrate uh, cosine theta with respect to theta. It's just going to be sine theta. So just copying down r squared e to the r cubed. And then we have sine theta evaluated from theta equals pi over 2 to theta equals pi. And we have dr. So we know that when theta is equal to pi, if you think about this, when theta is equal to pi, sine theta is equal to 0, and when theta is equal to pi over 2, sine theta is equal to 1. So we have 0 minus 1, so we're going to have a negative 1. So I'll go ahead and bring the negative 
out front, we write this integral. So we have integral from 0 to 3, r squared e to the r cubed dr. Great. So now we just have to integrate with respect to r. And if you notice here in our integrand, we have both a function and its derivative. We have, or some scalar multiple of its derivative. So we have an r cubed and an r squared. So we know that the derivative of r cubed is 3 times r squared. So it looks like the best option for us right now would be to make a u substitution. So we can set u equal to r cubed, and du is equal to 3 r squared dr. So uh, solving for dr here, we have 1 third du, or r squared dr, is equal to r squared dr, which is what we have here. We have r squared dr. And we also need to remember that we need to recalculate our bounds of integration here, because these bounds are in terms of r, but we need them to be in terms of u if we're going to do our u substitution like that. So we know that when r is equal to 0, u is equal to 0 cubed, which is 0. So our bounds are going to be 0. And finally, when r is equal to 3 up here, u is equal to 3 cubed, which is equal to 27. So we have here 0 and 27. OK. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this integral as an, the integral from 0 to 27 with our new bounds of integration in terms of u. Of all out here, we have, don't forget the negative sign, negative, and we have also a factor of 1 third out here. So we can just bring that out to the front. Negative uh, 1 third here, and e to the r cubed, and r cubed is equal to u. So we have e to the u, all times du. OK. So this is much, much simpler now because we just have the integral of e to the u, and we know that the integral of e to the u is going to be e to the u plus some constant, which we can just forget about because we have a definite integral. So we can rewrite this as negative one-third times e to the u, where u is evaluated from 0 to u equals 27. OK, so we can rewrite this as negative one-third e to the u. So first of all, when u is equal to 27, we can just rewrite this as e to the 27 and minus a negative. So we can just have plus 1 third times e to the u, where u is equal to 0. So when e to the 0 is equal to 1, so we can just leave this just as is. So we've solved for our, we've solved our integral here, our double integral, and we did so by rewriting everything, re-expressing it in terms of polar coordinates instead of rectangular coordinates, and we made our lives much easier by doing that. And we were able to just make a couple, a simple u substitution and finally solve. So our final answer is going to be negative one third e to the 27 plus one third. And that solves the problem. So for more problems of the week, you can click on our playlist here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can click on this link here. And to visit us at centerofmath.org, you can click this link here. Thank you for watching.